Hello, in this video we're going to introduce the concept of coset. So you start with a group G and a subgroup H. And so given an element in the larger group G, the coset generated by that element is this set. G times a capital H. This is called the coset generated by G and the, it is a set and the elements of this set consists of products little g times little h where h is an element in the subgroup. So let's go with an example you might be familiar with from linear algebra. Let's take g to be the vector space r squared. h is the set of ordered pairs x, y such that x plus y equals zero. So this is a linear subspace coming from the equation y equals negative x. So we know from linear algebra that that is a subspace. It means it is actually a subgroup with respect to addition. So the group operation here is addition. That is worth pointing out. That it's good old fashioned vector addition. Now let G be the vector two, negative one. Then our coset, since we're working with addition, I'm going to write addition here. The coset g plus h, by definition, is the sum of things of the form 2, negative 1, and x, y, where x, y is an h, which means x plus y is 0. So in other words, it's all expressions of the form x plus 2, y minus 1, where x plus y is 0. Of course, if you decide to do a substitution, say, let a equal x plus 2 and b equal y minus 1. Then, of course, you can see that a plus b is equal to x plus 2 plus y minus 1. x plus y is 0. So we get 2 minus 1 is 1. So you can prove that this set is actually the set of all ordered pairs where a plus b equals 1. So in fact, actually you have seen cosets before in linear algebra. Uh, when you're talking about r to the n, and you're talking about a matrix equation ax equals zero, that defines a subspace, h, the null space of the matrix. But you also talk about ax equals b, and in general that defines a coset usually it's some form v plus h, where v is some vector that has the property that a times v equals b. In linear algebra, they call that the particular solution. And so the whole concept of coset is just generalizing this concept of particular solution to arbitrary groups. So as a first example, let g be the symmetric group on four numbers, the first four positive integers. And let h be this subgroup. Yeah, you do have to prove that this is in fact a subgroup. It turns out, well, any two of these, any of these elements is order two, and so it is its own inverse, so you're closed under inversion. And you can check that the product of this element and this element, any two of these elements is the third. And so this actually is a group. The uh, other approach to way to check this is to take your rectangle and label it 1, 2, 3, 4, and you can check that the symmetries of the rectangle are exactly these permutations. So there's a shorter proof of that. Let's look at the cosets of H. So here's an example of a coset. I'm going to multiply it on the left by the transposition 1, 2. By definition, this means for every element in h, I need to look at the product g times little h. So g times the identities here, g times this permutation, g times this permutation, and g times this permutation. So this is my coset. Of course, if I leave it in this format, it's kind of poor taste because clearly more work can be done the very least that can 
one, two times itself is the identity. But also, you know, these are not disjoint cycles, so I should probably compute these products. Suppose I computed these products, then this is the result. This cycle turns out to be this one. Why? Because 1 goes to 3, then 3 goes to 1, which goes to 2, 2 goes to 4, and 4 must go back to 1 at that point. And a similar calculation here. So this is this coset. Similarly, I could ask what is the coset 3, 4, H? Well, it's going to have the element 3, 4. It's going to have the element 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. 3, 4, 1, 3, 2, 4. And 3, 4, 1, 4, 2, 3. You can calculate this. Um, these two elements commute, and then the three fours cancel. So I should get one two here. For this permutation, what happens? One goes to three, which goes to four. Oops, let me be careful there. Four goes to two. And 2 goes to 4, which goes to 3, so 2 goes to 3, and then 3 goes to 1. And for the other permutation, we see that 1 goes to 4, which goes to 3, so that should be 1 goes to 3. 3 goes to 2, and 2 goes to 4. So there's another example, but... If you look at these two examples, they're actually the same, so that makes me feel kind of stupid, but this was on purpose, by the way. This is a fact we will prove in a later video, but it turns out, in this case, these two cosets were actually the same. And so sometimes it's good to note when, in advance, when a coset was going to be the same, so that we could have avoided this tedious calculation. Namely, we already had the 3, 4 here, and so that we'll see that that should have been a clue that this was going to be a waste of time. Although it's not a complete waste of time, it's meant for instructive purposes. The point of doing this is so that you learn so that you don't waste your own time. So I guess we should try a different example. How about multiplying by 1, 3? Yeah, I'm sorry I keep doing two cycles, but they're easier to calculate, so I'm going to stick with that. And get 1, 3 times 1, 2 times 3, 4. 1, 3 times 1, 3 times 2, 4. And 1, 3 times 1, 4 times 2, 3. So this is going to be slightly the first part and the third elements are going to be easy to calculate. What's this middle element going to be? It looks like 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 3, and 3 goes to 4. The third element's the cycle 2, 4, and the fourth element, it looks like 1 goes to 4, 4 goes to 3, and 3 goes to 2. we see that this is not the same coset as the first one we got. So this is actually a different coset. So with respect to H, these two elements are related because they lie in the same coset. These four elements are all related because they all lie in the same coset. These two elements are not related because they lie in different cosets.